What's new with respiratory drugs? Find out today on Medical History Mystery. Can you believe last night I was up until midnight and my cat was having difficulty breathing? So I bring her to the vet and the vet tells me she has asthma and I have to start, I have to buy this thing that goes over her face so I can puff albuterol into her and like you hold it so she breathes it in to help her with her asthma. So that's a story for another day. But it got me thinking about our patients and how We do have patients with asthma, yet nobody walks around with their inhaler unless it's really, really bad. And I know that there's a lot of side effects to when you use inhalers. And I was just wondering, is there anything new? Well, it's kind of ironic that for some people, cats cause asthma. So here's a cat with asthma. I mean, how often do you hear that? I don't know. Leave it to my pets. So so here's my question to you, Bam. Are you going to help your cat brush and floss after you use the respiratory medication? Because, you know, that's what we do recommend in dentistry. So I'm just curious if that's going to be something you do. You do not even know who you're talking to right now because I have a full array of dental products for (laughs) my children and I brush their teeth every stinking night when I'm home. You told me all about it. So I knew that was a trick question. Yes, absolutely. But, you know, that's what we recommend in dentistry, right? For humans, we say, you know, if you're going to use your inhaler, you know, make sure you rinse, but rinsing doesn't really do all of the work because most of the drugs we use, obviously we have phospholipid membranes, right? So that means all the drugs that work in our body have to be fat soluble. So when you're using an inhaler, you want that drug to be fat soluble to cross membranes and do its job in your body. But at the same time, if any drugs left behind in your mouth, rinsing with water really doesn't do anything because water and fat don't mix. You'd almost be better off rinsing with Jack Daniels to say, you know, say something like that. But I mean, I'm just saying water and fat, not a good combo. So what do you do? Well, rinsing is important, certainly. I mean, you do want to rinse with water as much as you can, swish, try to get the medication removed. But at some point, you got to also brush and floss because mechanical removal of the drug is very important. What I tell my hygiene students and my dental students and people that attend my lectures is, Respiratory drugs are, for you, job security. Because as long as respiratory drugs are available, people will not be able to use them correctly for whatever reason. The drug ends up remaining on their teeth and their mucosa, and that's, you know, that's decay. And that's, you know, the potential for gingivitis that can lead to periodontal disease. And and not to mention opportunistic infections with certain respiratory drugs. So it's, it's always going to keep you in business. So rules of thumb, Rinse whenever possible because it's more convenient, obviously, right? Brush and floss whenever you can. But also, here's where dental professionals make a difference in a patient's life. Albuterol, and this is going to sound controversial, but it's not meant to be. Albuterol really isn't a treatment for asthma or COPD. I say this and people say, what do you mean? Everybody I know with asthma and COPD uses albuterol, right? But Realize that asthma and COPD are inflammatory conditions. To treat them, you need something that's anti-inflammatory. Guess what? Albuterol is not anti-inflammatory. So it doesn't do anything to treat the underlying disease. Rather, it just treats the symptom of bronchoconstriction. Now, if you let that prey in your mind a little bit, you say, well, then wait a minute. That's playing the short game, right? Don't I need to play the long game with these conditions? Don't I need to prevent future episodes of asthma and future you know, flare-ups of my COPD, exacerbations? Well, yeah, that's why you need to be on more than one drug. So when your patient says to you, when you say, okay, I see you said you have asthma, what do you use to treat it? And they say, well, I use albuterol. The next question out of your mouth has to be, you know, what's the other drug? They say, well, there is no other drug. I just use albuterol. That's the wrong answer because that means they're playing the short game and not the long game. Now, again, they may have intermittent asthma or maybe seasonal asthma. Okay, so maybe they're not on a long-term drug. But I will tell you from my experience as a pharmacist, what really happens is they get a prescription for the long-term drug, you know, Advair or Singulair. They take it for a few weeks. They don't see really any improvement. 
or any benefit, they see side effects and they say, you know what, I'm not going to use this drug anymore. It's too expensive anyway, and I don't need it. It doesn't do anything. I'll just use my albuterol because I know that works. But that's playing a short game, right? That's not preventing future attacks. So as dental professionals, we have to encourage patients to not only play the short game, but also the long game. Use the Singular, use the Advera, use the Symbacort, whatever their drug is, so that they can they can not only treat just what's going on now, but prevent future attacks. Because as we all know, future attacks of asthma, future flare-ups or exacerbations of COPD cause more and more issues down the line, right? The less flare-ups, the less episodes, the better. All right, random question. But what if you had a lot of time on your hands and you're really like into rinsing? What if you did oil pulling with coconut oil? That's a fat. I've heard this before. I'm going to rinse with an oil vial since you're so obsessed with fat and water solubility. I'm going to rinse with coconut oil or some other oil. Or and butter. Throw some butter. butter in there. <laughs> As a bachelor, you just soak everything in butter and it tastes great, right? So I know Perfect. that. So yeah, that's going to pull it out. I guess it would. I don't, I don't know. I've never really thought about using oil pulling for pulling drugs out of off your mucosa that you sprayed on as part of your respiratory therapy. I also do think it has to do with technique. You know, how do you use an inhaler? Did anyone ever teach you as an, a patient with asthma, how do you actually use an inhaler correctly? And you, of course you can watch anything on YouTube, right? And, and find out easily. But the word I always like to re resort to for patients who use a regular old inhaler, you know, the kind you just stick in your mouth and press, is, is snorkel, right? Stick it in your mouth first. Breathe in through, right, the inhaler. Then depress, you know, however many times you're supposed to once, right? Hold and then breathe out. And so you, when you use it that way, you're mixing the drug with air. But I've seen a lot of people just take their inhaler, give it a couple of shakes, stick it in their mouth, and it's like breath spray. Like it ends up on their tongue and it ends up on their mucosa, but not much of it gets in their lungs. Yeah, technique is everything. And so I would imagine that the recommendations for proper oral hygiene are for inhalers, but also nebulizers and other devices that are used to treat asthma. Again, got to rinse and you got to brush and you got to floss to get all that drug, especially with a nebulizer, because nebulizers take the, the, the particle size down to the next lowest level. Uh, where it's really microfine. And that's good in a way because it, it helps you breathe the drug in and get in there deeper, right? Great. But it also means there's a lot smaller particles now that's left in your mouth that you have to rinse and, and brush and floss away as well. And and one more thing about, about respiratory drugs is remember that they're they're not they're not going to save you in the case of an acute attack unless you've got the right one with you. Okay. So Make sure you know it's always the short-acting bronchodilator, the albuterol, that you refer to as your rescue inhaler. All of the other inhalers, you know, leave, if you're going to go to a dental office, leave them home because we don't want them in the office. That causes more confusion. Just bring the albuterol. Now, another controversy that comes up, Pam, and you can help me with this one, especially for my students because we train them, leave the albuterol inhaler on the tray or on the counter. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I tend to think, I could be wrong about this, that maybe the best place for that inhaler is in the patient's hand because they know sort of like a placebo effect, right? They know, look, if everything just goes to heck in a hand basket, I've got my inhaler in my hand. I mean, what, how, what do you think about that? I think that is a great idea, but I guess they could drop it or I don't know. So I feel like that's just, you know, and then you as a clinician feel comfortable that it's like right there in your eyesight. So you can kind of like grab it and give it to them or whatever. I see both sides to that. But I have one final thought. Clean your devices. You know, you put this thing in your mouth, you're spraying it, you get saliva, nebulizer. It's like a back and forth and you're just breathing that. Clean it. Make sure that your patients are disinfecting the equipment that they're using as well. So nebulizers, CPAPs, inhalers, everything they use can easily become contaminated. And we all know steroids, especially decrease immunity, increase the risk of infection. And that's a candidiasis that's just waiting to happen. Nobody wants that. Exactly. Okay. So I know we've got more things to cover, a lot of exciting things coming. So 
Join us next week for Medical History Mysteries. We'll see you then. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.